uh, took off his vest that still contained five firearm magazines. He laid his gun down and he ran out of uh, down the stairs and out of the 1200 building on the west side and he left the 1200 building at 227.55 p.m. He then ran and blended with, in with students who were evacuating the campus due to the fire alarm. Uh, as he walked away he, uh, into a residential neighborhood, he was arrested at 3.49 p.m., uh, approximately three miles away from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Uh, there are the facts, Your Honor, that we would like on the record. It's a factual basis for the plea. Okay. <clears throat> Based upon the stipulation as well as the factual basis presented by the state, <clears throat> I do find there's a factual basis for the plea. And based upon the, the defendant's guilty plea, uh, I am going to adjudicate him guilty of counts 1 through 34 of the indictment. Also, a matter that was not uh, pla was placed on the record but not in the defendant's presence is that I did adjudicate the defendant guilty of all four counts of the information in case this was done on Friday in case number 814129 I did on Friday which was the October 15th, I adjudicated the defendant guilty of count one, attempted aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer, count two, battery on a law enforcement officer, count three, depriving an officer means of protection, and count four of the information. Uh, the defendant was adjudicated guilty. Uh, now that he has been adjudicated guilty, I intend to set uh, the homicide case for trial on the sentencing uh, phase two trial uh, before I go ahead and, and discuss that part is there any other is there anything else that either side wishes to add to the record or or present at this time I believe Mr. Cruz wanted to make a statement to the court and to the victim's president yes. of the courtroom okay may I take off a mask sure I am very sorry for what I did and I have to live with it every day and that if I were to get a second chance, I will do everything in my power to try to help others. And I am doing this for you, and I do not care if you do not believe me. And I love you, and I know you don't believe me, but I have to live with this every day. And it brings me nightmares, and I can't live with myself sometimes, but I try to push through because I know that's what you guys would want me to do. I hate drugs, and I believe this country would do better if everyone would stop smoking marijuana and doing all these drugs and causing racism and violence out in the streets. I'm sorry, and I can't even watch TV anymore. And I'm trying my best to maintain my composure, and I just want you to know I'm really sorry. And I hope you give me a chance to try to help others. If, we, if I believe it's your decision to decide where I go, and whether I live or die, not the jury's, I believe it's your decision. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Nothing to say, John. Judge, at this point, I don't, I don't think there's anything stopping the court from sentencing him on the 18-14-129 case to 25 years concurrently, Judge. There's nothing to stop the court from doing that. I'd ask, oh, ask the court to impose a sentence of count one of 15 years, Florida State Prison. Uh, count two, consecutive five years, Florida State Prison. Count three, consecutive five years, in Florida State Prison. And count four is a misdemeanor, Judge. I'd ask the court to sentence him now. I don't think the victim is here for the purpose of the sentencing for that. The victim has decided he does not want to be present. He asked me to ask your honor uh, to impose the maximum sentence as possible. I, I don't believe legally I can impose a consecutive, counts one and two are the same. Well, they're not judged. They have different elements and we um, do believe that you can sentence him to consecutive sentences. So we would ask for 15 years, which is the maximum on count one, five years consecutive, which is the maximum on count two, five years consecutive to that, which is the maximum on count three, followed by a year, um, which is uh, consecutive to that, which is the maximum on count four. 
So even though count two is a lesser included of count one, you believe legally I can impose consecutive sentences on one and two? It is actually not a lesser included. Actually, Judge, they're separate offenses. Yes. Because one is an attempted aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer using an item as a blunt object, whereas the second one is battery on a law enforcement officer, which is based on the punching and hitting. Okay. So they are separate offenses. Are you in agreement that I should impose the sentence at this time? Um, yes, Your Honor, we are. We would ask, it's a total of 26 years in Florida State Prison. We would ask that you adjudicate him. You've already found him guilty, um, and that you impose that sentence. Sure. And that is when um, the defendant was exercising allocution. He said at the very end that he believed that you were in charge of his sentence and not the jury. So I'm not sure if he was talking about. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure who he was talking about. I don't know if he meant you, meaning me, or you, meaning the victim. Clarify so that he does understand that in Florida, it is going to be a jury that determines his sentence as to counts one through seventeen, and not this court so that we don't have an issue later on, on appeal, or a 3.850 or a 3.851, saying that he misunderstood. Sure. Mr. Cruz, I, I'm not sure who <coughs> you were, who, I'm not sure if you were talking to me or the victim's families when you said you, um, but you do understand the state of the law. I went over that with yes, you. Yes, I do. And so you know that it's neither me nor the victim's families that are going to be in charge of imposing the death penalty, I, um, I don't know if you meant, the way I took it was you meant that they could ask the state to waive it. No, that's not what you meant. Well, why don't you just tell me what you meant? What I meant was is that um, I believe they should have the right to uh, choose the mm -hmm. victims themselves on whether uh, I should take uh, life or death. So in other words, you're urging the victims to encourage the state to waive it and no. sentence you to life. Judge, may I interject? Sure. I think what Mr. Um, Cruz was saying was that ultimately, in his heart, he believes it should be the victim's families that okay. make the decision about life or death. We have, however, explained to Mr. Cruz that it will, in fact, be the jury that will make that decision after the presentation of evidence of aggravators and mitigators in phase two. Okay. This, I believe, is just his personal belief. I understand. It is in conflict with the law, but he understands the law. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Cruz, is that correct? Yes. So, so if you were the legislature, you would leave it up to the victims to decide what penalty to impose, but you understand that's not the state of the law in Florida. Yes, I understand it's, that. You understand it's going to be up to the jury. I understand that. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Sure.